So go ahead, Randy, share your screen and proceed. And this is Montana State MEBP ISO switch test fixture. Hi, everyone. I'm Randy Larimer. Um, I'm the special projects director for Montana Space Grant and the engineering lead for the NEBP. And it became quite obvious to me that um, we needed a method to test the iridium system, the cut down, the Occam's, uh, the vent, and any additional commanded payloads that you have, something that's more visual uh, than what we currently have. So I have a couple students. Um, Maximus and Chris, who have developed uh, a switchboard that basically goes between the Iridium and the Occam's unit. It allows you to visually see um, what commands are being sent between the things, uh, as well as uh, to be able to command it with a series of switches. So it does not require the Iridium satellite connection to be able to test your cutdowns, Occam's, and vents. And so um, here's the, the abstract uh, for the uh, talk. Here's what the uh, board kind of looks like. It's a little graphic of it. So it has some LEDs across the top. Um, those are the input LEDs, if you will, from the Occam's and the Iridium unit. Um, there's four LEDs that actually show the settings of things coming back. Um, the LEDs D2 through D0 show the commands that are being sent uh, between the Iridium and the Occam's unit. So from the Occam's to Iridium or vice versa. Um, <clears throat> down below, there's four switches. Uh, switches S2, S1, and SW0. Those are switches to be able to set the three command lines for uh, Iridium and for Occam's. So you can set the eight different combinations there. Switch S1 or SW3 is the um, kind of control switch. It allows it to be either in the Iridium mode where you can continue to send the email commands as we do on launch day, uh, as long as you're outside and have a satellite connection. If you put it into switches mode, um, it disables the Iridium and allows the switches above to operate um, idle, cut down, close vent, open vent, those sorts of things. So basically there's a multicolored cable. It's an eight pin cable that comes out of Irid Iridium. Um, that plugs into this board. There's also a two pin cable that provides power to Iridium. It'll feed it through from Occam's to Iridium. It has a red and black cable on it. On the right hand side, um, you'll notice that there's an all black eight pin cable there's two ends to that. One is labeled S and one is labeled zero. If you study that cable um, in depth, you're gonna find out that there's two lines that are crisscrossed and that's on purpose, all right? Um, the layout of the board, we missed that. It was supposed to be a straight through cable and it's not. So that's why there's an S and an O end and it's important to know uh, where those go. And again, the two pin black cable will uh, feed it feed power through from Occam's uh, to Iridium. So here's what it looks like. You can see the Iridium connector is on the left along with its power. Um, SW3 is the one on the bottom. So it picks Iridium or switches and the Occam's connection is on the right here um, as well as the power feed through. And then the input LEDs are up here and the command output LEDs are here. You all should, all of the engineering team should have gotten this um, either before Christmas or right after Christmas. And so here are the output commands um, that the Occam's unit is, is receiving from your email when you send the Iridium. So basically um, switch, if all the switches are zero, that's the idle command. If you send a 001, that's going to send the cutdown command uh, to your cutdown unit. Um, we don't use the next state, so anything that's labeled NA, we currently aren't using. And those are available for your teams if they want to develop some switched payload um, that you can use those. 011 opens the vent, a 100 closes the vent. And then the last three, again, are, are useful uh, for you to actually control payloads. 
there's a caveat over here. Um, the online pin state is supposed to be displayed on our Borealis tracking website. Um, it turns out that only those modems for teams that have those from 2017 will show up. And so this is the ASCII equivalent that'll show up on that pin state output. For those of you that got new modems this year, um, it currently is not available yet. It has to do with the coding issue um, and the way a variable was set up for the IMEI numbers. And we're currently working on that. The student who designed that website is currently uh, working on solving that for us. Here's the inputs that come back. So this is the action of what, um, what once you send a command, what should have happened. And so, um, for example, with a, um, an idle command, you're not going to see uh, anything lit up. If you send a cu cut down command, the LED on the input side should light up D3, right? The cut down acknowledge, there's a caveat here too. This is um, a feedback from the cut down system that has been disabled. Um, there was a problem with traffic between the various ACA modules. And so it's in the code, but it's disabled. If you go in, you can turn that on and you would be able to see then D4 turn on. However, it's not currently in the code. Uh, it's disabled. The NAs again are not used. <laughs> Event open is going to be um, a one zero zero there. And then if event uh, is an open and a cut down, it's going to show up again, a couple of other not used things. And then down at the bottom, the vent closed and event closed with cut down sent. So this will give you a visual of what your system is doing um, as, as, it's, as you're testing it on the bench or in the lab. Again, here's the, the board and the cables. You can see those are labeled with the S's and the O's there. You all should have that. And then here's um, the system set up. Know the, or notice the O right here on the Occam's board and the power up here will have an O. This end will have an S, but this is how you connect it. The ribbon cable coming out of your tracking system into here. This is not intended to fly on the balloon. This is only for bench work. Um, so don't try to fly this thing. Um, here's another view of it. Again, you can see the O here and you can see the S's here. Um, with, the, with the system set up. So I'll take questions in a bit, but I actually, I have a unit here, it's up and running. Um, this might be a little awkward to demo, but we're gonna give it a shot here. Can you stop sharing your slides and then we'll see you better. Yep, we can do that. Thank you, James. All right, so here's the system kind of all set up here, if you will. I'm gonna to try to get this up here so you can see it, right? Um, if I send a 001, let's see if I can get it. You can see it turns that on and we have an LED that comes on to say that basically cut down was sent. And if you could watch your hot wire, you would see that hot wire actually get hot and cut. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and send another idle you're gonna see that LED go out. So we know it's an idle. So why is this one on over here? If you look back, it tells me that the vent is closed. Um, and so let's see if we can open the vent here. We're gonna send this one. And you should have heard the vent actually move. It did, it brought back an LED. And if you look at the chart, it's gonna tell you that the vent is actually open. I'm gonna actually close the vent now with a command. And you should have heard that too. Again, it came back and said that the vent is open. And now if I send idle, right, it's not gonna show anything. I can resend cut down after an idle, remember? And it shows up as an idle here. So that's a really quick demo of the board. Please email me if you have any questions whatsoever. This is intended as a design aid for all the engineering teams to better understand uh, what the XBs are doing between uh, all the different units and also a way for you to um, expand, hopefully, what you can control on your balloon.
So with that, I'll go ahead and stop and take any questions. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, the um, Iridium that you're using, uh, the, the service plan, is it direct to um, Iridium or are you using uh, something like RockBlock? Because um, it took about eight seconds for an email command to go through to actually be received by the unit when I was testing between eight and 16 seconds. But uh, through RockBlock, sometimes it would take minutes. Uh, but that was years ago when I was testing the Iridium. Uh, yeah. I've flown it many times, uh, but I use a service provider that uh, is uh, locally in uh, the United States, and they they uh, I think it's about sixteen dollars a month for it. Yeah, we do not use RockBlock. Uh, we're using uh, NAL out of Virginia. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, that's who I use. Yeah. Yeah, and we do not have what's called a deterministic plan. So basically they stack up the emails and we'll send them out to the Iridium units in the order that they're kind of received and based on how busy the traffic is. So sometimes it can be right away. Sometimes there is a delay. If you want it uh, deterministic timing, um, you pay for that. Um, we have chosen not to pay for that. Um, really what we're doing is not you don't need milliseconds or even seconds of accuracy in terms of when the email goes and it's quite expensive to get that. So we've, we've gotten the cheapest plan. It works. Yes, there's delays. Yes, you might have a, uh, a several minute delay, um, but it will get through. Um, what we have also found is the number of satellites, um, you know, up in the sky or whatever that you can see, um, that affects the, the timing of when the emails come through as well. And I also noticed the antenna uh, was uh, very critical. I have a, a helical coil antenna that's like $60 and it screws onto the uh, SMA. And that seemed to work better than a patch antenna for the Iridium. That's, uh, a, so that's a good point. I'd love to see that antenna. Um, uh, and actually, SparkFun has it on their website if you search for Iridium antenna. Yeah, so this, this has flown little, literally a couple hundred flights. Um, it's been on ASP several times. It's been through the chambers at NASA, the Thermovac chambers. Um, this is the configuration um, that, Iridium, that we worked with NAL and Iridium to come up with. So it has the GPS antenna over here and Iridium and mm -hmm. then a ground plane uh, underneath it, right? Um, I have an interesting story where this worked during a GPS jamming session uh, when we were at uh, Fort Sumner and NASA actually used um, our payload to be able to find their balloon because their GPS was being jammed. Excellent. Okay. Any, any other questions? Is there written documentation about this yet? And if not, will there be? Um, I'm going to send an email out to the pod leads that will then distribute it to the teams. Um, we have to be a little bit careful in distributing this far and wide um, because now anybody in the U.S. who knows how to work with Iridium can send an email command and do what they want with your balloon. So I wouldn't share it um, indiscriminately. I'd make sure that the people that need it get it, but that's about it. So I'm not gonna post it on the website anywhere, right? I would prefer not to do that. Um, that's great. And then also you need to have a magnet on your vent flapper, right? Oh yeah, so here, here is the vent that I was using to do that. And you can see right, um, right in here maybe. Let's see if I can get it, there we go. See, we just have a, a magnet glued to the bottom. And then the board that's picking it up is over here. So yeah, if you don't have the magnet, you won't be able to see if the vent is open or closed. Good point, James. Thank you. Okay. One more question, and you probably discussed earlier. What altitude do you pop the vent to open the vent? We were able to float at about 60,000 feet. Um, okay, yeah. We opened it about 10,000 feet. Um, ahead of time. We had a fantastic float during the annular eclipse and actually had the balloon floating. And as the temperature dropped, the altitude dropped about 10,000 feet. And then when the sun came back, it went back up. Uh, it's a pretty cool picture.
Yeah, if you get up, uh, I think above about twenty six kilometers, it's probably impossible to to vent <laughs> through yeah. a traditional vent. Okay, great. Okay, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have any more time. However, I know Angela put Randy's email in the chat, so if you have any other questions, you can obviously uh, send an email over to Randy uh, as well. So.